Hi, today I'm going to be looking at how we can search for files in the file system with a given suffix. So this will be an example of some re recursive code. So I have some starter code here called filecounter.java. So I'm going to open that in Emacs. And I'm going to do a split screen, and I'm going to run the code below to show you what the starting point is. So I'm going to compile uh, filecounter.java, and then I'm going to run that. And I'm going to give it um, two paths. Uh, one, I'm going to give it the directory a path that it'll search. I'm sorry, I'm not giving two paths. I'm giving a path and then a suffix. And basically, file counter will search this um, for files ending in the suffix. So I'm going to run that. Oh, and I meant to add txt. And it says there are three txt files. So let me actually look at the directory a and check this. And sure enough, there are three txt files. Um, now, th this program is currently um, not complete because what we'd like it to do is not only search for these, but it should search subdirectories um, for other files. So, for example, um, directory B contains this txt file here. And you can see we fur go further down and there's directory C, which contains other things. So, what we want to do is we want to modify file counter to be a recursive program. So, it will explore these guys as well as this immediate directory. So, let's take a look at the code. Um, we have a main method here, which is pretty simple. Um, it's just creating this file counter object, which, um, which I wrote, and taking some arguments from the command line and passing them to this count function and then printing the result. So um, this count function is where we're going to spend all of our time. So I'm going to head up, up here and highlight this. So we see that we take the path and the suffix from the command line. And then uh, we open up a Java file for this path. And uh, this name is a little bit misleading in the Java API. This could refer to either a regular file or a directory. And then we're going to do some sort of counting, and we return the count at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to first check if the path that we were passed ends with a suffix. That's the first place we count. And then if that file is a directory, we're going to loop over all of the subfiles and see if any of those end with the txt. Um, suffix, and then we'll add those, right? So we're just adding up in two places. Um, do I end in txt, and do any of my children end in txt? And, and what we want to do is not just look at immediate children, but look at uh, grandchildren and, and great-grandchildren and so forth. So we're going to have to fi um, um, fix this part here. Uh, in particular, this subfile might be another directory that contains something interesting. So I'm going to comment out some of this code, and we need to do a recursive call. Imagine that this subfile was, say, uh, directory B, B before. I'm going to just open this up again in the shell. Um, so as we're looping over um, all of the children, all these subfiles, so here's a subfile, here's a subfile, here's a subfile, here's a subfile. For directory B and directory B2, we want to keep iterating, um, keep recursing in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this dot count. Of course, this is the recursive call. If I go up here, I'm, I'm calling myself, and I need to give it a path. So I'm going to copy this path from here, and then I'm going to pass in the same suffix. Okay, and whatever this returns, I want to add that to my subtotal. Now, now let's think about what this does. So let's say that first this count function is called on directory A. Okay. Um, directory A doesn't end with txt, so we cruise over this. It is a directory, so we loop over all of these things. Right? We loop over 1, 2, 3, directory B, directory B2. And for each of these, we call uh, this recursive function. Now, let's imagine for um, different files what this means. Let's say the subfile is um, 2.txt. Right? So we're going to re-enter this function with text for the path. Um, we're going to count it here. And then we're going to skip this part because it's not, 2.txt is not a directory, and we're going to return 1. Right? So now going back to, you know, the one that called it on 2.txt, we're looking at directory A now. So we were here, so 2.txt returned 1 for us, so we're going to add 1 to the total for 2.txt. Now let's say that this subfile is another directory, say directory B. Right? In that case, we're going to loop over this code, directory um, B, and the directory doesn't end with txt, no surprise. And at this point, we're going to start looping over all the children of B. We'll add those up, and then we'll return those back 
to the directory A level. Okay, so let's, let's actually run this code and, and see if it's correct. And now instead of getting three, we get 11 files, right? So we have to somehow sanity check that. And there's a way to count files uh, with some simple bash commands. And I realize I'm not explaining enough now uh, for you to be able to use these um, if you haven't seen it before, but hopefully um, I'm kind of whetting your appetite so you go learn about it on your own. Um, one resource that you could um, use to learn about these is at the beginning of every semester, um, Wacom will have a, a, an event where that's open to anybody um, where they'll kind of walk you through a number of different bash commands. So I highly recommend that to anybody interested in learning. Um, so anyway, I'm going to run some bash commands now. And this find command is just going to um, return everything under directory A. So lots of stuff underneath here. But I really only care about the stuff ending in txt. So I'm going to pipe this to the grep, which is a sort of filter. Do that. Now I just get the txt stuff. And then I'm going to put this to the word count program, which will tell me the number of lines. I see 11, which is what I wanted earlier when I actually ran my program. So we see this is correct.